Just about everybody on the face of the earth knows Pac-Man. You know the sights, you know the sounds, you probably even know the names of the ghosts. But why does Pac-Man do what he does? I mean, why does he even exist? His creators talk about challenging maze designs and giving ghosts personalities, and there are countless rumors and legends of how Pac-Man got his name. But how was the world introduced to Pac-Man? The arcade game featured humorous intermissions, but they didn't even try to tell a story, at least not until Ms. Pac-Man was released. Several artists out there have made up their own renditions of Pac-Man, including one depicting him as a pill junkie astronaut running from the ghosts of his past. You've probably seen some of those images online, but in the original instruction manual included with the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man, it actually opens up talking about the game as an arcade success. There's no backstory until you get to section two, Life in Mazeland. Now, in the short-lived cartoon series, Pac-Man and his family lived in Pac-Land, not Maze-Land. Yeah, that's right. Pac-Man has been adapted to TV, with a Pac-Man cartoon in the 1980s and an even more recent CGI show, which has created a new breed of Pac-Man Adventures games. The 80s cartoon made reference to the Pac-Man family living in Pac-Land, and the new TV series calls it Pac-World. The newest series may be a little more rich in the story department, though not much. And our hero is the last yellow pack person? I don't know, there's a bunch of them with various powers and skills and personalities. They've transferred these into the new games. But outside of these adventures games, which I kind of consider more to be like spin-offs, today's gamers are treated to Pac-Man DX tournament psychedelic special blah blah blah. I, I don't know. It's fun, don't get me wrong in the least. I put more than a couple hours into the modern Pac-Man games myself, including the most recent Pac-Man 256, an endless runner-style game where you try to avoid ghosts and keep ahead of the kill screen. But you're listening to a guy who has a tattoo on his arm which may feature the illustrious Pac-Man, so I'll take my Pac-Man pixelated, thank you very much. So I digress, let's get back to some of the older games that we're really here to talk about. In the mid-80s, there was actually a Pac-Land game a video game as well as a board game. It was pretty much a side-scroller where you just had to get to the end of the level within a certain time limit, avoiding ghosts and a couple of obstacles, but pretty much no mazes. Apart from Maze Land instead of Pack Land or Pack World, let's see what the Atari manual had to say. The object of the game is to keep Pac-Man happy and healthy in his home of Maze Land. Seems simple enough. You score points for every video wafer... Video wafer? This must be Atari's way of explaining why the dots that were in the arcade game look a lot more like dashes on the 2600. Ms. Pac-Man would arrive later. Ms. Pac-Man was a personal favorite of one of my best friends growing up because we had an arcade cabinet in our local laundromat. In the arcade, the game featured improved sound, better visuals, and most importantly, dialed up the speed compared to the original Pac-Man machines. The home version of the game, shown here on the Super Nintendo and here on Genesis, featured updated graphics of the 16-bit era. The Tengen-produced instruction booklet, similar to the Atari's Pac-Man booklet, once again simply talks about the success of the franchise and explains the rules of the game. It does talk about a cool cooperative mode that I had no idea existed, but it still doesn't go much into storyline. Pac-Mania was a sequel in the NES era, which provided slightly more angular, isometric perspective into a 3D maze world. It was released by Tengen, or Tengen, however you prefer to say it, and allowed for jumping, and also included other power-ups, such as Green Power Pellet, which would speed Pac-Man up. There have been various other incarnations of Pac-Man along the way, but when it comes to sticking to a storyline as laid out in an instruction manual, Pac-Man doesn't exactly have much in the storyline department. Now, I already know what some of you are thinking. We haven't gotten to the origins of Pac-Man. Why does he do what he does? Why does he look the way he does? The thing about Pac-Man is he doesn't really have a true origin story. Sure, there might be something out there that has told the Pac-Man story, like the cartoons or maybe even comic books. I, I don't know. The goal for our story so far was to see if the instruction manual really got you in the mood to play the game. Did it set the scene? Did it set the stage for what you were going to be playing? It has its roots in the heyday of arcade history. 
It was designed to gobble quarters faster than cherries to make your friends compete for a higher score. But the manual did a good job at preparing you for that. It really made you feel like you were going to become a professional video game player. Long before the birth of eSports, the Pac-Man manual made you feel like you were gaining the edge on the competition by having the ability to hone your skills in the sanctity of your own home. What it lacks in creative storytelling, it actually makes up for in echoing Atari's marketing at the time. That you were getting an arcade experience in your living room. And who could ask for more? Thanks for watching our first episode of Our Story So Far. More episodes will be coming very soon, and hopefully soon it'll be a weekly show. For the most up-to-date news, be sure to check out the website at ourstorysofar.tv, or just follow me on Twitter, at New Angel, that's N-U-A-N-G-E-L. Really quickly, a big thanks goes out to Nick Maynard from Rochester, New York, uh, for letting me use his song Snow Wizards that you hear in the background right now. Check them out, there'll be a link in the description. See you next time on Our Story So Far.